Hello, I hope you're having a good day. My name is Concover22 and I'm late to the game. Today we are going to be putting Red Hat on a computer. So if you're ready, I can show you how to put Red Hat onto a laptop. Okay, never done with that. Let's uh that <laughs> was a joke. I'm sorry, that was just too good of a joke. I couldn't pass it up. Anywho, for real, we are going to install Red Hat and Windows 8.1 on the laptop. Got an old laptop here. Go out and download a program called Rufus. Rufus is a utility that lets you copy ISO files to a USB drive. I have two USB drives right here that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be plugging them into the desktop I have underneath the desk. If you do a search, it pops up rufus.ie. I note this in case if the URLs ever change. First thing you do is you install Rufus. Second thing you want to do is you need to get your ISOs for both Windows and Red Hat. Red Hat and Windows 8.1 are both free to download legally. With Windows 8.1, you will, however, have to furnish a CD key. Red Hat, the only thing you need to do is you need to create a Red Hat developer login. If you want to download the Red Hat Enterprise Linux log, I'm sorry, ISO, you can download it from developers.redhat.com products, Red Hat Enterprise Linux download. Again, I put the search in because they may change the URLs at some point. I will also put these URLs in the description. So I've gone here, I've clicked my download, or if you need a different version for whatever reason, they're all listed here. That's that. That's that. You can also download Windows for free, but they will require you to have a CD key. Here is the link for downloading Windows 8.1. I've also noted them over here to the left on my screen. Select the edition, Windows 8.1, Windows 8.1. I click confirm. It's gonna say product language, English. I click confirm. Then most folks, you need 64-bit download. If you're not sure which version you need, if it's a computer that can run Windows 8.1, just get the 64-bit. Click 64-bit download, and it'll do it. It may ask you for your CD key. So let's go ahead and walk you through the Red Hat sequence. I'm going to stop this. Go to the Red Hat Linux Enterprise page. It will require you to log in. And you'll be able to download Enterprise Linux. And you see, I've done this once before, so we're going to go ahead and cancel this out. We're going to cancel that out. And once you've got Red Hat Linux, just like with Roof, I'm um, sorry, just like with Windows, you right click, run as administrator. Yep. Drive. Log the drive in. It's got 16 gigabytes. That's nice. So select Red Hat wherever you downloaded it. Open. Pretty much leave everything alone and then hit start. Now, like I said, first off, make sure you're administrator. Second off, I've tried this in ISO mode. I always have trouble in ISO mode. So I always select write in DD mode. So I select write in DD mode. Hit OK. It's going to erase everything on the drive. We know that. Hit OK again. It's erasing everything on the drive, and it will subsequently put Red Hat onto this key for us. And I will come back as soon as it's done writing this key. 
Okay, it looks like the uh, Red Hat USB drive is almost finished. Wait a couple seconds, let that wrap up. <laughs> Disk 2. As administrator. Yes. Plug the drive in. Automatically detected. Select. And this time we'll use the Windows 8.1 disk. Now this time it's not going to have nearly so many complications because Windows is Windows and Windows likes Windows. So I'm just going to hit start. I know all, of your, all the data going to go away. And uh, I'll come back, go away. I'll come back when it's finished. Oh, hey, look. Well, it appears that the uh, Windows 8 ISO has also finished installing. I'm sorry, copying to the drive. So at this point, we're going to close it out. And I think I'm just going to take a look at disk management. Since this one was a Microsoft world, it should be one big, huge, fat 32 partition. Yeah, that's about what I'd expect to see. So, we're going to inject that drive. Got the drive here. And I will put it on my laptop next to the Windows icon. It says Windows 7, tells you how old that laptop is. And we are going to move over to the laptop to proceed. Given that your laptop's BIOS settings are correct, that's beyond the scope of this video. All you have to do is plug in the drive that you want to boot from, which in my case will be the Windows drive first. Then turn your computer on and begin to press the key that allows you to choose to boot from the BIOS. So this is the power button for this particular device. And I know my boot key is either F11 or F12. So I'm going to slowly go between the two. We're going to scroll down. We're going to arrow down to UEFI PNY USB 2.0. And it may say press any key to boot from USB, or it may just boot from USB. Windows gives you little circling dots. Red Hat gives you a little comet that goes in a circle. Okay, here we are. Windows 8. We booted from the USB key, just like I showed you. Now. Next. Install now. Open that number again. License. Next. Now here, if anything has been left over from the old system, I go ahead and I simply delete it. I know there's nothing on here. If you have anything on there, stop what you're doing, go back and get your data off, because after you do this, it's going to be much more difficult and much more expensive to get your information. Delete. Okay. Delete. Okay. Delete. Okay. Now i got 300 gigabytes. I'm going to dedicate 100 gigabytes to Windows. So click New. 
and apply, and it will give you a message that says it's going to create other partitions. So 100 gigabytes roughly, close enough, good enough for government work, and you let it proceed through the installation. I'm going to cut the video now, and we'll come back when I'm looking at a Windows blogging screen. Windows setup, give your computer a name, pick color, next. You can just go with express settings, you can change all these later. We just want to get Windows installed on the computer. I don't have Windows. I think you click create new. And I'm not going to create a Microsoft account, I'm going to create a local account. And we'll come back whenever it is. Windows 8 installation has completed. We now have Windows 8 installed on the laptop. That's the first step. You got to do Windows first. Next step, turn Windows off. Okay, shut down. Now, wait for it to do its thing. This time I'm going to take my Red Hat key, plug it into the same place. Power it on again, 11 and 12, because I'm not sure which one. And this should get me into the boot menu, just like we did with the Windows 8 key. Just keep doing it until it gives you a menu. There you go. Now, just like before, we arrow down. Hit UEFI PNY 2.0. PNY simply because that's the brand name of my USB key. You see the Red Hat installation screen. For me, it's English United States. Obviously, pick whatever works best for you. Continue. The first thing I like to do is I like to set up network and host name. Because that way it can do the updates, it can do network time, what have not. So we're going to do what is this? This is just for the workstation and need to turn the network on. Red Hat is unique in Linux distributions or somewhat unique in Linux distributions in that it requires you to have an account to get system updates. So that's what I'm going to do next to put my personal Red Hat information, which again, you're not going to be able to see, but the account is free. So I'm going to connect to Red Hat, type your username, and you need to do this so that Red Hat can go out and download updates. Publisher, let it choose for a minute. Buttons from home. Yes, for loop. Hmm. Yeah. And then go to the hard drive. Select the hard drive. I'm just going to tell, I'm going to let it do what it wants. I don't. When I was a younger man, I used to care about what it put and where it put it. Now I just want to get working. I'll go to installation source. It may take a second or two to figure this out.
I just do this. I do this and run an update later. Software selection for my personal use. I'm going to be using this as a workstation. So I'll do this and anything else I want installed, I'll install it. English United States, for me, that's perfect. Americas, I live in the good old state of Texas. Yeehaw. It's working kind of server. That's the way to figure it out. kind of server. We're okay. Done. And last but not least, a very, very strong password. very carefully for sure next location is that skip Find no problem. Confusing. That's a tutorial for GNOME. Uh, GNOME, if you need it. And you are in and rocking and rolling. So at this point, you should be able to reboot your system. Upon reboot, you'll be given a menu that allows you to select either Windows or Red Hat as your booting operating system. So let's give that a try. Go to restart. You may notice that uh, after you installed Red Hat, you either got dumped into Windows or got dumped into Linux. There did not appear a menu that allowed you to select both. There's a trick. If you got dumped into Linux, you simply follow the, well, there's no simply about it. If you got dumped into Linux, you proceed into your Linux distribution. You have to make some adjustments to what they call Grub2. That will allow you to add the Windows option to boot from when you see the Grub boot selection menu. At which point you're going to go to your terminal, type in the following commands. Most of the stuff should be straightforward should follow my examples exactly, but you're going to want to check. So you're going to want to type in sudo f-e-i-s-k, which is going to list all the hard disks on your computer. Dev sda1 is the EFI system partition from Windows. Dev sda2 is the Windows boot drive. Dev sda3, 4, 5 are my Linux drives. I would like to take this moment to discuss different sorts of hard drives. The hard drives listed in the black and white screen were basic regular SATA drives, the kind of drives that you'll find on most computers. Newer computers and some high-end laptops, some high-end desktops have what they call NVMe drives. Just because I showed SATA1 or SDA1, SDA2 or SDA3 as my Windows partition, your Windows partition very possibly 
could be located on NVMe 0N 1P1, NVMe 0N 1P2. This is why you must, must run the fdisk command that I showed earlier. You must run that because every single system could be different. More modern systems will have more modern drives. You're the editor of your choice. I know. Don't edit any of these lines up here. Come down to the next line. Type in the following. Menu entry. Windows 8.1 for me. You would obviously type Windows 10 if you were doing Windows 10. You could type in Microsoft with the dollar sign if you feel so compelled. Whatever makes you happy. Down here and just add a tab because it helps me to keep organized. The first hard drive. And the second partition. Jan loader this one and not the bracket. Control O to write out if you're using nano. It's written. Control X to get out. So you've written the file, but you haven't really recreated the grub bootloader. At this point, you will do the following. Pseudo. Output equals root probe to grub.configuration should generate the configuration file with the changes you've made and done. And since we're here, I'm going to do a do reboot to test to see if what we did actually took. And look at that. You now have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you now have Red Hat Enterprise Linux Rescue, and you have your Windows installation. So that's how you install Red Hat Enterprise Linux and a Windows installation on the same computer. And you will see this whenever you restart the machine. And there's Windows. That's about all she wrote. Please subscribe, like, and mash that bell. But most importantly, most importantly, I hope you learned something. I did.